Christian, man, thank you so much. Uh, this is crazy. <laughs> what is this exactly? I mean, it's a ballistic stomping grounds. It's the legacy program with Puma. This is insane. I've never seen anything like it. What is this? Yeah, so, you know, my first talks with Puma, this was really kind of, this was my dream, and, and I wanted to grow the sport in this country. And they had some great ideas, and, and this is kind of what we came up with. We want to continue to build stuff like this around the country just to help grow the sport. And you can see all the excitement on the kids' faces, so I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's come out really well. Let's talk about that excitement. Why Miami? I mean, this is specifically in Miami. We're a couple blocks away from Calle Ocho, which is a famous place here. Why not in the suburbs? So I think one of the one of the you know main goals of it as well is kind of to serve these you know these underserved communities, which maybe don't have access to you know nicer fields like this where they can come out and just play and play for free and, and just enjoy the game. And, and and I you know I didn't have much of that growing up. I just remember moving to England for a year. I would play on this court every day outside my school and just play free and enjoy time with my friends. And I hope that the kids can get a little bit of a sense of that. And I mean, I feel like so much of my game is from that kind of playing free and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully they can have something like that here. I mentioned we're a couple blocks from the historic Calle Ocho where people gather and they play chess. You actually have a chess board as part of this project. Why? So. Um, I got to give credit to my to my grandpa on that one. He's the one who he taught me chess at a young age, and I've really kind of grown into it the last couple of years. And I don't know. I just feel like chess just teaches you so much about life. It just teaches you um, a lot of a lot of you know cool things, a lot of decision making, and, and just problem solving. And I just think it's an amazing thing to an amazing skill to have. And it, it may be you know tough to teach the kids out first, but I think <laughs> some people catch on and they like it. And it's just it's something that I play every day. So I just wanted to to add that in. Let's talk about playing every day. Um, obviously, there isn't much of a pickup culture here in the United States. I see your game and I see a lot of that pickup culture. You're a very good 1v1 player. How important is it to you to kind of instill that culture here in the States? For me, it's, it's super important. It's one of the reasons why you know, I wanted to do something like this. I mean, you see some of these, um, some of these prodigies and all these skillful players, for example, coming out of Brazil, coming out of some of these South American countries and um, different places. And uh, you know, why can't we do that here? And I think a lot of the reason is because they're just over there playing free and trying all these things with their friends out in the, you know, having fields, places like this where they can go and just express themselves. And, and I hope that we can, you know grow that and have that kind of feeling, especially in communities like this. And uh, I think it could be, you know, could be a huge growth for the sport. Let's talk about expressing yourself. You expressed yourself very well this past weekend in the Nations League in those two games. Let's talk about the Mexico game specifically. What made this game different from the Mexico games of the past? I mean, I, <laughs> you've definitely seen a little bit of everything when we played Mexico. It's always going to be, it's always going to be a good game. It's going to be a battle. It's obviously, you know, we tried to kind of stay away from the rivalry talk before the game, but once that whistle goes, it's just, uh, it's a battle, man. And uh, we obviously, you know, went up and, and, and got the goals that we needed. And unfortunately, the game got a bit nasty. It got a bit crazy for sure. There was definitely more fights, red cards, a bit more than, than we'd like to see uh, because, you know, it's not, that's not all the game is about. But unfortunately, when, when things get, you know, get intense like that, you know, really anything happens and we saw that. This Why do you think it got so out of hand? Because there was four red cards. There was four red cards. Um, I mean, you know, it started. It started with them um, just kind of lashing out. I mean, there was obviously a few, you know, really tough tackles, which which is, comes from frustration out of them, which is understandable. But it also, we have to stay. We have to stay more level-headed. I think, uh, we, you know, we, we obviously lost some players for the final as well, um, some big players for us, and uh, yeah, we we lost our heads a bit, and that that's on us. But um, I mean, you, you can. I think a lot of people could agree that that the game uh, the refs really lost control of. How yeah. The game went. Yeah. What is it about Mexico that brings out the best in you? I mean, if, if I'm not mistaken, that's four goals versus Mexico now. Uh, all time, you're tied all time leading goal scorer versus Mexico. What is it about that team that brings out the best in you? So I don't know if it's, you know, Mexico specifically that I, you know, like to perform against. I think I love playing in big games. Um, I love playing in big games, you know, against against rival, you know, rival countries. And uh, it just so happens that I've scored quite a few goals against Mexico. Um, and when games like that come around, I'm, I'm always ready. I'm, I have my best preparation and I'm definitely motivated. You had uh, some very iconic moments, or you guys have had iconic moments versus Mexico. Uh, in Denver, CONCACAF Nations League final, you shushed the crowd. Um, there was also the Man in the Mirror uh, t-shirt that you broke out in Cincinnati. Uh, we saw Weston with a ripped shirt against the Mexican national. The, the Dos Acero celebration, the rock, paper, scissors. What's the most iconic of them all? <laughs> um, 
That's a good question. I think my personal favorite is probably the the man in the mirror. Um, just the way, <laughs> just the just the way that happened. Um, I literally decided to write that like two minutes before the game. One of my teammates actually wrote it, and uh, it just so happened I go in and score on my first touch. And just the way it happened was pretty cool. But I mean, Weston's moment this last game. Uh, there's been some some pretty special some pretty special moments against them. Uh, was that Timothy Weah who wrote that? Who was it who wrote it? Um, I'm trying to. Think. I'm trying to think, Timothy Weah was in the idea. I think Aaron Long actually wrote it. Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even remember. All right. Talk uh, about Ricardo Pepe actually scoring a goal against yeah. Mexico. Obviously, Mexican American, it means a lot to him. Give me your initial reaction when you see Ricardo Pepe come on, because it's one of those goals that you don't know if you can celebrate yet or not, and it finally counts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to be honest, I knew it was on side as soon as <laughs> I, like from a player's perspective. I could, you know, you just feel when you, right. you know the timing was right. He was on side, so like you want to celebrate, but nowadays you, you can never until you, you get the official call. But yeah, I give a lot of credit to him, man. I mean, he's, he's gone through some tough times in recent years, but for me, he's a killer in front of the goal. I mean, I, I really like what I see. I'd see it every day in training, and uh, you gotta give a lot of credit to him as well. You know, obviously with Flo coming in, um, you know, competition in that position, but I, I you really gotta um, applaud him because he's come in and he's, he's done the job and he's scoring goals, and, and uh, you just love to see that. I have to ask you, it was Mexico. Mexico just fired their coach. Literally seven games, their only loss being to you guys, and they just fired the coach. What's your initial reaction? I mean, I, you know, I don't know everything that's going on um, within their their federation or, or you know whatever the situation is. So I don't want to comment too much. Um, obviously, we played a great game against them, um, and it was a tough one for them, absolutely. But I know that they'll come back and um, come back with strong teams ready to battle. Many of us found out. Uh, about Greg Berhalter coming back to the U.S. Men's National Team moments. I'm talking about maybe minutes before you guys kicked off. Uh, when did you find out about Greg Berhalter coming back, and what was your initial reaction? Um, I found out in the mix zone after the game when somebody asked me what I thought about it, and I didn't even know it was true yet, so it was interesting for me to find out that way. Um, but uh, obviously he hearing about it, uh, yeah, I, I, we didn't know what would happen, to be honest. Um, you know. It, I said it in you know in interviews. It is a testament to the team how well we performed um, and just continued on with him not being there. It's 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 his staff. We're playing in a very similar fashion, a similar style, um, and I think you have to give him a lot of credit for, for how much this team has grown in recent years. I have to ask you because you you were very vocal about Greg Berhalter and, and you kind of backing him, your support for him, um, even when maybe most fans weren't. Why were you so like adamant about Greg Berhalter coming back? Yeah, I mean I don't. I don't even wouldn't even say I'm adamant about trying to bring back Greg in so much. I I just have to give credit where credit's due, and and it does frust, fr frustrate me a little bit. And just seeing um, just kind of all the negative press towards him. I mean that people tell me about, and I just I can't fully understand it. Uh, what exactly? I mean he's come in and you know won the Nations League, won the Gold Cup. You know we win the Nations League again. You know had a solid World Cup. Are there things that you can criticize here and there? Sure, and I think he'd agree with that. But it's, uh, it just seems a bit, it seems a bit crazy to me, um, the criticism. And uh, I just, uh, like I said, I, I have to give credit where credit's due. Can he take this team to the next level? And if so, what is that next level? I mean, absolutely. I think, uh, I think he can do it. But I think uh, just the players in this group are so hungry. Um, no matter who the coach is, um, I, I see a team that's hungry and, and ready to improve. One that is, you know, from when we failed to qualify last time around, I mean, I, just the change in, in the team and, and the way that we look now and how much you know more confident I feel going out there with this, this group of guys. Um, I think it's a team that, that, uh, that people can even fear. I mean, it's a, it's a tough team. I wouldn't want to play against our midfield at all. So, so uh, I'm curious. Um, a while back, I believe, it was after the World Cup qualifying game in Nashville versus Canada, you said that you guys needed new ideas, new solutions. Many took that as kind of a shot at Greg. I'm curious, what changed in that process where, where you bought it? I think I think I bought in. I think a lot of different players bought in. I, I think it's a uh, it's been a process. I mean, it, it was never going to happen overnight. And I think that was when the team was very fresh, very new. You know, a lot of you know new faces. And uh, I mean, I think you can see the growth since then. I think it comes with confidence. It comes with winning in these big moments, winning trophies, lifting trophies, having that trust and confidence in each other that you know we are good enough and we are a, we are a good team. And, and with that confidence, just comes. You know more results, and, and now we just uh, we feel even better. You know around each other. You mentioned that you won the Nations League with Greg, the Gold Cup with Greg, the World Cup, and everything. That's another Nations League now. It's a third title for this program. What does that say about the program? 
I mean, it just it just shows the growth and uh, just the belief and, and the way these players have bought in and um, wanting to make this this country a you know a powerhouse when it comes to the, comes to the sport. That's that's what we do. Our our overall goal every time we go into campus change the way the world is you know views American soccer. And I think we've absolutely done that. And uh, I think there's new levels that we can take it to. I don't recall ever feeling that you were a vocal guy, that type of leader. I think you got a quiet confidence about you. But there was a video that went viral before the game and you told the locker room, we didn't come here to beat Mexico. Why was that important for you to say? When I said, we're not, what did I say? We didn't come here just to beat Mexico. Oh, okay, I, yeah. Did you? <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't see this. I say things to the team before the game. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we're here to win a trophy. Um, you know, we, uh, we obviously have a tough you know, task in front of us and, and that's the first step. But at the end of the day, um, that was just the first step, and uh, we're here to win a trophy. That, that's our overall goal. Do you feel like you're growing into this vocal leadership role? Because when I think vocal leader on the uh, in this pool, I think Tyler Adams. But you're growing into your own. Do you feel that? I think it's important uh, for a guy like myself, you know, maybe slightly more introverted. You, you've never heard me speak um, so much. And, and, I mean, I think if you ask the team, I don't speak that much, even as a captain role. I think it's important for me to lead by example. I think... Uh, you know, I hope guys look up to me, you know, in that way and, and just see a professional who's always going to gonna give it his all and, and fight for this team um, and, and give my best. And I think when you do that, um, you inspire the others to, to do the same. Staying on Nations League, how is the approach to Canada different than Mexico? Yeah, I wouldn't say, you know, it's entirely different. We always, you know, prepare and have similar meetings um, for, for all our games. But obviously it's a different style of team, uh, a team with, you know, more speed, uh, very dangerous in transition. Um, they, you know, they present, they have a lot of different qualities and I, I really would say they, they were coached well and they, they played a solid game and had a lot of moments in the game. Um, at the end of the day, we were clinical in the boxes and that's where it counts. Um, but that's not to say that they had no chance in the game. They, uh, they looked like a good team. Absolutely. I, I listen, I say a lot of things in this industry and, and every once in a while I have to give a mea culpa. Um, I had to give one to BJ Callahan because I called him. Andy Bernard, he was the assistant to the assistant, you know, in the office type of deal. But he, you have to give him credit. He really just pressed all the right buttons. I mean, just talk to me about what you saw from B.J. Callahan and your perspective, already being in that locker room and what he offered. Absolutely. Um, I have a great relationship with B.J. I mean, and he, he spoke to me even before the camp, and he said, like, look, I want to I wanna make you guys, you know, now that I'm, I mean, I think he kind of accepted the role he was. He knows he was the assistant, you know, another assistant um, went by. Now Anthony was gone and now he's, he's in the spotlight. He said, look, I want to get all your feedback and I want to help and I want to be a part of this. And, and, and I think I said to him before the camp, we trust you. We, we trust you. We, we know what you bring. Um, come in and, and bring you, give your plan and we'll, we'll, we'll adjust off of that. And uh, he did a great job in, in being a leader and stepping up. And like you said, I think he made a lot of great decisions. And uh, I love the way that, you know, the teams he put out, I love the way that the team was playing. So it was a, it was a really good game. One of the biggest decisions was playing Gio Reyna centrally. He looked good, especially in that final. Talk to me about what you saw in that first half and maybe what you saw after he came out at halftime. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I'd say that this is the best I've seen Gio, um, and I was really happy to see it. Um, he's he's going to be a big part of this program moving forward. We all see it. Um, we're continuing to grow as a you know relationship on the field, off the field. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, I'm enjoying seeing him grow as a player. Um, you know everything that that's like happened or, or whatever. I think it's it's so far behind us, and I, I just like the I love the player that he's becoming, um, the person he is, and. Uh, I uh, obviously, like you said, in that position as well. Um, I have to give him a lot of credit. He, he looks really good there. In your interview okay. with Graham Hunter for ESPN, you mentioned how you weren't too pleased um, with everything that happened with his parents in the World Cup. Where are you now with him? Uh, yeah, I think it's so far in the past. Um, something that, obviously, the way it transpired, everything, uh, you know, I guess we kind of lost a lot of time with our coach. So, it, uh, yeah, the way things happened weren't great, but it was no shot at anyone. I wasn't trying to go after someone. Um, we're moved on from that now, and I'm really happy with the way that the team looks. Talk to me about Flo. I mean, Balogun, he looked the part. Didn't score against Mexico, but he was so strong in between the boxes versus Canada. Yeah, um, I mean, he's going to be a big, you know, a big addition to this team. We see it already. Uh, he's a great personality off the field. Uh, you know, a quiet guy, but someone who brings a lot to the team, has a lot to offer in that position, and uh, I enjoyed getting to know him and, and playing with him. What would success be like for the U.S. Men's National Team at Copa America? I think, uh, 
obviously when you go to a tournament, we go there to win. That, that's our that's our overall goal. I think uh, you know we're going to go in again. It's it's two tournaments. First, you got to get out of the group. That's that's our first focus. Once we do that, um, you know these knockout games in Nations League and World Cup, they're only helping us grow. And we want to go and uh, take it game by game and, and win as many as we can, and, and you know try to lift the trophy at the end of it. Let's talk club career. Big questions. How important was this summer when you're talking about your club career going forward? Yeah, it's a big summer for me, for sure. I think, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of talk, and, and I was so focused this week on what I was doing with the national team that it was kind of hard to, to think about all that. But uh, it's absolutely a time where I, I need to figure out what's what's going to be best for my future and, and somewhere where I can go and uh, and play, and play and, and be trusted and, and feel good in what I'm doing. Um, and I want to find that, that joy uh, at a club level again, for sure. What do you need at a club level to be successful? I think it's I think it's what all players need. I think you want to go somewhere where you're wanted and somewhere where you feel comfortable playing. Uh, somewhere where you can enjoy going out and, and, and fighting and, and doing what you do uh, on a weekly basis. And uh, that's it. That's it. Sometimes you need a new start. Um, sometimes you know. Other times you don't. You got to find what's you know what's best for you and, and just you got to be in the best headspace uh, mentally and uh, somewhere where you, uh, yeah you can find that joy again. You know, coaching changes are always difficult for players. That's been kind of the case at Chelsea. Lots of coaching changes. Mauricio Pochettino is there now. Does he being appointed manager impact your future with the club? It can. Uh, it can. You, you never really know. Um, I've obviously had quite a few coaching uh, changes in my career, and that's, that's no excuse or anything. That's just a, that's a part of, uh, of every player's career. And, uh, yeah, you never know. You, sometimes you can get a fresh start. You get a new opportunity. Um, other times... Um, yeah, maybe you don't feel it's best and you feel that a move is best for you and, and you got to decide uh, decide what's best for yourself. Two questions. First question, uh, if not Chelsea, is the Premier League still the best league for you? Uh, I don't know if necessarily um, I would say that. Big question. Is there a timeline for your decision, Christian? Uh, not necessarily a timeline. Obviously, there's a transfer window, uh, so yeah. ideally... Um, you make decisions before then, but uh, I wouldn't say that I'm giving it all. By this day, I need exactly to get this done. I want to I wanna make sure I make the right decision at the end of the day.